Hello everyone. Today I would like to introduce you to Genrex, Gen's uh, latest open source project. I am a senior researcher at Gen and I generally work uh, on tools for part-time matching and um, for usage of formal models in security in general. I had few talks on BotConf already about Yara. And I will actually mention this awesome tool as well, as you see in a moment. Motivation. Genrex, or uh, generator of regular expressions, was initially created to help malware analysts to automate their work. Uh, the tool is still evolving and uh, we found several new use cases for it. But let's start from the beginning. Imagine you have thousands of behavior reports from your samples and you want to describe these samples uh, with some characteristic like artifacts, named objects, behavior and stuff like that. Genrex can help you with that because uh, it is able to detect patterns and algorithms creating these, uh, these patterns and create regular expressions from them so you can describe the malware family precisely uh, without false positives and also it uh, generalizes the results so you can possibly uh, detect also future variants of these, uh, these malware families. Genrex was initially presented at academic conference IEEE Tascom conference, and I also wrote a very like theoretical paper about it, where I described some algorithms, some experience. Uh, we, the, in this current moment, we are still waiting to uh, for journal to publish all proceedings, but all materials, all resources are already online available, and with this link, you can also read the post print of this paper. And by the way, uh, the first idea for this tool was to uh, use the results, the regular expressions for Yara rules, but currently we are experimenting with many, uh, many other use cases as well. We also open sourced uh, this project, so it's uh, available to everyone. It's still in development as uh, we are basically experimenting uh, with other use cases when, uh, where the generics can be used. And I'm actually currently working on new release that is coming in uh, future days. I also publish uh, blog posts uh, commenting uh, some basic stuff about this tool uh, in par as part of my Know Your Era Rules series. You are welcome to check this series on engineering Avast.io uh, website. And by the way, there's also nice blog post created by my student about Yara X. Uh, it's basically future of Yara tools, so uh, it could be very interesting for you. What I gathered during my years at GN Dynamic analysis is not that common as stat static analysis, but it still can be very useful. Of course, you need sandbox on, or emulator or such uh, kind, but uh, you can get a better feeling basically what the malware is doing and how it behaves. With this information, you are able to create rules that are more flexible and can detect a uh, more wide variety of the malware family we are working on. Also, one, one small note uh, about a common uh, like misunderstanding. Uh, in this talk, uh, I will use results from uh, Cape V2 sandbox, but uh, in Yara rules, you will see Cuckoo model. Yara 
implemented Cuckoo model, but uh, the Cuckoo model is, uh, uh, was replaced by the Cape V2. They both are compatible, so you can use both, uh, both reports from both sandboxes. Uh, but just uh, you know uh, that uh, it's, it's similar things, but a little bit different. Here you have example, very, very like uh, simple example of uh, some uh, randomly created uh, samples by me uh, that is showing that uh, usually the name objects, files, and etc. are created by some algorithm where you have fixed part and some random part uh, generated basically based on operating system, version of it, username, and stuff like that. Here, uh, the only variant part is the uh, suffix, uh, the number at the end. We want to detect these similarities and create a regular expression that is covering all these samples and potentially future variants, but uh, that they, uh, we should avoid false positives because we don't want to detect, for example, clean samples, right? Here's an example of uh, Yara rule. I, I believe I don't have to explain how Yara works in much detail, but the Cuckoo model still can be relatively new to you. I link the documentation for you here, but put it very simply. You need to import Cuckoo model in your rules, and then you can call the Cuckoo functions like cuckoo.sync new text, and then you can use both regular expressions and text strings as well. You can mix uh, dynamic and uh, statistical analysis and characteristics together in one rule, and then you can call it uh, with the report and with the sample. If you are using only the Cuckoo module, then you don't actually need the sample itself. You can put there just empty file because Yara is uh, searching only in the report itself. You can also check my extension to the Cuckoo, uh, Cuckoo module. Uh, I added some functions. Uh, here you can see them like cuckoo.generex. And I also added functionality uh, with which you can compare number of matches in the, uh, the specific report. It's a very simple imp uh, implementation. You can check the patch file that is available online. Uh, but we found it uh, quite useful at Gen, and we are using this format of rules. Now, I will briefly explain how Genrex works because I genuinely believe it will help you to get better results from it. You can split the Genrex the evaluation into several steps and I will briefly go through them. The input is defined as a list of strings, their source, and input type, mutex, files, registers, stuff like that. Uh, the thing is, you define all of these because they help uh, Genrex to get better results, basically. Uh, the hash one, hash two, it's just for, uh, for simplification. Uh, we use, uh, like, commonly the hash as source, but you can put that here everything you want. And the input type is, again, optional, but it's better for generics to understand what kind of input do you have. Here is the simplest uh, example of how to use Genrex and get some results. Uh, you import it as an art Python library, and then you call uh, generate function when uh, you add the input, and then you have results, list of results. After calling the function, the first step is the main specific 
reprocessing. Basically, it's uh, optimizing the input so it's more usable for Yara rules, but also other tools. And we are eliminating uh, two specific factors, like, for example, username, because usually uh, on your sandbox uh, or simulator uh, eliminator, you have uh, some specific username, but uh, then you can come across different samples and stuff like that, where the username can be different. And also, we are removing string containing only guides because they are like hashes and they are too specific for each sample. The clustering phase uh, is uh, the priority of speed, basically. So it's not very precise, but that's the point. We are using the engrams, uh, which are calculated, the length of them are calculated based on uh, the type of strings we are using uh, and other characteristics. And we are splitting the inputs into several clusters and calculating also statistical information from them, like how unique are their, uh, their average uh, like occurrence in the samples and stuff like that. For each cluster, we are creating prefix tree. Prefix tree is great because we can detect uh, the prefix, the start, common start uh, of the strings. But to get even better results and to be able to detect common subparts inside of the strings, we are using the engram that was actually uh, like uh, helpful for creating the specific cluster. And then we are adding the rest of the strings in the cluster around the first tree. This, this way we can create tree, as you can see on the slides, where the malware in the middle was, the word malware in the middle was detected. Of course, then uh, the tree is minimized, but this is just like some formal formalities stuff. From this, we created two matrices. First one for all states, the second one for just the final states, accepting states. And we've simplified uh, Brzozowski algebra methods. You don't have to understand this. Uh, we basically are solving a uh, set of equations. And with that, we are getting uh, like uh, internal representation of regular expressions. They are not done yet because right now they are not really usable. They are a little bit weird in weird, weird format. But this is fixed in the final uh, state where we have domain specific optimizations that are they were created basically to get very efficient regular expressions. They are able to match precisely the current samples, but also the future ones. And here you can see the first result from the GenX. You have the regular expressions that the, the probably not the most important part you are interested in, but also additional statistical information like uh, resources and they can be useful. We use it actually in some processes and hashes uh, where the regular expressions actually came from. So you can uh, calculate basically coverage of your samples with that. We run some experiments to be sure how uh, precise these results are and if they can be used for automatic uh, Yara rules generation. The answer is yes, they can. Uh, we use public available data set that was created by Avast and Czech University and we basically uh, created new version of it with uh, new version of Cape V2. Uh, sandbox. We also added a set of uh, clean, uh, clean samples and we updated uh, the classification because there are some small changes. Uh, the reports contain several examples of uh, malware like trojan swarms, 
spyware and stuff like that. And for classification, we use atoms, files, mutexes, and other. Uh, for testing, we split the dataset into two parts. Plenum dataset we use for error rules generation, and the second path uh, for testing the data, uh, the error rules itself, itself. I use uh, the extended version of Kuku module, as I mentioned before, and I also created list of clean strings. Uh, created by uh, the sandbox, so we don't want to match actually these, these uh, strings. Uh, there are several ways how to create a uh, similar uh, set of strings uh, for yourself. The most straightforward is uh, run malware and also clean samples uh, on your sandbox or simulator, emulator, and select uh, the strings that are present in all reports, basically. Of course, this doesn't catch uh, like every clean, clean string, but uh, uh, it will be, it will eliminate the most prevalent one. And for preparation, uh, we also selected uh, from the, uh, from the data set, which contains like 50, 54, oh, oh, uh, yeah, 54,000 samples. Our reports. We selected for each family first 100 samples uh, that was different enough. Uh, we checked that with uh, assess deep hash similarity and we created like empty, empty file for Yararu. Then the principle is uh, quite simple. You repeat following steps until the coverage of Plenum dataset is 100%, or you just cannot uh, extend the error rule anymore. Firstly, you need to filter the clean strings, so you remove the strings you don't want to actually use. And then for each named object you want to use, you call generx to create regular expressions. Then you want to select regular expression that covers the most samples from your uh, current working dataset, and also check if they don't uh, create false positives. You can check against clean samples, other, other samples from other families and stuff like that. And then you check your data dataset and the samples that still are not covered, you basically repeat the same loop with them as much as possible as long as possible. Here is an example of automatically created Yara rule with, uh, from the Quackbot file menu. Uh, the most, uh, they are mostly used for uh, detection of file access. And uh, the results, we use uh, true positives and uh, false positives to evaluate uh, how precise Yara rules were and I think we get, uh, we got pretty good results. Uh, we come in paper, we compare it with a few other tools uh, that's specialized for uh, Yara rule generation and we basically uh, got the best results so far, I know. Uh, so we are quite happy with, with these results. And now, I will show you and tell you a few tips and tricks how to get the best results from the Genrex. Okay. So firstly, I will demonstrate the actual the example from the slide, so you believe me, it actually works. It's pre-recorded because I know myself, I would totally like uh, forget how to connect to my server and, and stuff like that. Uh, but I will go through it slower and uh, I will explain more stuff. Hope you can. Ah, you can see it, no, I'm sorry, technical issues.
showing your second screen, so maybe you need to. I just have one screen. Yeah, but duplicate. Yeah, there it is. Oh, thank you. Okay, so so I'm uh, using the Python three dot ten, and you can see it's the same example as on my slides, and when I run it, we have. We have the results. Now, sometimes when you run Genrex, you actually, it returns zero results. Don't panic. It's actually a good thing because uh, we don't want to generate uh, two general like results, two general regular expressions just because we want them. We want quality results, so sometimes uh, the input is too general or maybe too short. Uh, the minimum uh, number of uh, characters are actually four. So here is another example. Where we are using two short strings. Three characters, it's, it's not enough for Generex. It's a, a similar reason as why uh, Yara is uh, generating warnings about uh, potentially slowing down scanning. But if you, ex you have large, longer strings, like four characters and more, then Generex can create better results. So now you have actually results you probably want. Also, uh, as I show, show you before with the sources, you can put every input in one list and it's totally okay. But if you want to have better results, it's a good idea to tell the Genrex you have several resources because it influences the evaluation. And the simple, simplest example of this is that you can have one string that is prevalent in several, uh, several uh, samples. And if you put everything together, you will lose this information basically. And Genrex can actually like filter out these, these uh, strings. So here is again example. So we have similar example as before, but uh, we are adding hello two three four. And it was filtered out. Because it was only in like one sample, so it uh, didn't catch up. But if we tell the Genrex, okay, this, this specific string, hello234, are actually found in two different samples, then it's suddenly more important from Genrex. And here we have other results. So now we have two regular expressions. And of course, uh, it's like, regular expression slash text strings, but it's okay. Uh, Genrex doesn't basically mind this, this issue, and that's, that's from the demo. Also, the last but not least, check every results you got from Genrex. No system, no project is perfect, definitely not mine, and you should always check against, for example, your screen set and stuff like that, so you are not using uh, something that would create false, posit uh, false positives, basically. Also, I'm st still trying to improve Genrex, so there are possibly some fu uh, future improvements and changes in the future. Yeah, but it 
just a few words for it. Here I have some resources, the public GitHub page where you can find the code. You can write some, some issues if, if you have some. And uh, I also link the blog post. Uh, I have a few more examples and more tips there, so you can visit the page. Uh, Genex demo GitHub page uh, contains information about the experiments I did for uh, the... Something yeah. wrong? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You could tell me sir. <laughs> Microsoft updates like oh my god. Is it better? Oh, okay. I could I could try to talk in check if if uh, the system Okay, never mind. Uh the demo page uh it's uh, basically the the Yara extensions uh, there are also links for the data sets. You can also check. Uh, they can be, for example, used for machine learning if you are interested in such stuff. Uh, actually, my colleagues from the Czech University, Technical University, they uh, managed to do also very, very cool stuff with it. So it's interesting. And uh, the paper is the last, but it's contained mainly like the formal stuff. So. Uh, just if you are really interested in this. Now, that's everything from my side. Thank you for your attention. I will happily answer your question. And also, important note, if you want soft caramel candy from me, just ask me. And beware, I have very limited amount of very special BotConf edition of this candy. So just come as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, okay, over there. Okay. Hi, thank you for your talk. I think it's an interesting project. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of applying uh, formal language theory to this, the, the problem of, of uh, generating signatures automatically, uh, since it's a well, uh, since it's such a well understood uh, field of computer science. Um, my question here is, uh, in, in your project, you use uh, uh, essentially uh, dynamic artifacts as your source of, of, uh, of strings. Have you uh, experience, experimented with uh, using uh, static artifacts, uh, st static strings, or, or other, yeah. other artifacts that you can extract statically instead? Yes, it's, uh, it's actually possible. Uh, to be honest, uh, my, my colleagues they are not really uh, like requesting these uh, use cases, but we are, for example, playing with URL addresses because we have plenty of those. Uh, but static information, <sighs> yes, in one, one case we use uh, for static information as well, static strings, uh, but in general, uh, we use it more for uh, for the dynamic analysis, but of course you can you can test it. Uh, sometimes it's specific to Marvel family. I would say if the strings are too random, it could confuse Genrex a little bit, and uh, they uh, then it can uh, provide a little bit like confusing results. So be careful about that. But yes. In theory, you can use it on several types of strings as well. Thank you for the amazing talk. Um, super cool. Um, I have actually two questions. So, uh, first one is you mainly used uh, Cuckoo or Cape Sandbox, but uh, in theory, would this be also possible to use artifacts coming from other sandboxes? And the second question is, do you, uh, did you experiment with also using network-based indicators? Like, for example, I could imagine certain patterns in URLs or something similar could be uh, used as well. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, you can use different sandboxes. Like, uh, thinking about it, like I, I'm not aware of any limitation in this regard for Genrex. 
uh, generics works mostly on like uh, nature of the named objects and events. So uh, it shouldn't be uh, something that it's really specific to sandboxes itself. Just, just you have to parse, parse uh, the, the reports accordingly, that's, that's all. Uh, the second question, yes. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are uh, using GenX also for URL addresses. Uh, currently, I'm working on like even command lines, which are a little bit more challenging for GenX, to be honest, because uh, the strings contain several types of input, and uh, I'm trying to optimize it so it's uh, still fast enough. But yes, uh, even in uh, in the future, I'm planning to extend the generics even more. So more updates are coming. Thank you for sharing this great material, even in the form of open source. And can you please go to the slide number 23? OK, <laughs> very specific. Yes, yes. Yeah, the specific because I'm interested in how you get these percentages. Did you emulate all the samples from this learning set and then applied it to some other set, or what was the methodology? Uh, we uh, we worked with data set with uh, already like uh, uh, labeled samples, so we knew uh, that this the sample belongs to, for example, uh, add load, and we split it into two halves. The first one for creation of the error rule, and the second half was for matching. And we also uh, match the the rest of the the whole set of the whole data set. So basically, the numbers, like for example, uh, the Loki bot, uh, we matched almost every uh, sample in this family, but we also match two samples either from Printset or from, uh, from different malware family that doesn't belong to LockyBot. And we calculated basically uh, the numbers and percentage of true positives and false positives. Is not clear? Yes, perfectly. Okay, thank you. So also about that same slide, did you not, uh, did you test for false negatives, so samples that you miss with those rules, were there any? Uh, yes, uh, like uh, here uh, in paper I have uh, more numbers, uh, but uh, we care about uh, the correct classification, but also false classification. So I have more results, and even in the link generic demo GitHub page, you have uh, additional information, for example, as F1 score for these and stuff like that. It, it just, uh, I couldn't put it all in one slide, but yes. All right, thanks. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you. Th thank you.